begin today's question and answer portion of the GIC talk. Um, if you did not get a piece of paper when you walked in, please raise your hand. Um, and one of our volunteers will uh, provide you with one and pick up. Um, and when you've written down your question, please hand it to the volunteers who will bring them like this to me. And I will address the questions to the speaker. Um, please refrain from asking questions directly to the speaker at this time. There will be time for that after this last portion of the talk. Um, so. <clears throat> You talked a little bit about the problem of animals losing their habitats. Yeah. Um, it once a, uh, especially about deforestation, once a forest is cut down, is there a way to rebuild or regrow a forest in order to um, mm -hmm. make natural? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, actually, yes, we need our habitats to live in. Uh, but the thing is, uh, I just tell you that in my country, there's a slogan like, if you cut one tree, plant five tree. In my country, there's, we have this type of slogan. So actually, where our motto is, OK, we can just cut a tree, but we can we can also rebuild that, that deforestation mm -hmm. by planting more and more trees by doing this. Yes, by, uh, by, by doing this type of things, we can, we can make it. Mm -hmm. So as relatedly then, um, what, is, what is something, perhaps small, something, an everyday thing that we can do every day to help preserve biodiversity or stay here? Uh, yes, we can we can do by ourselves in this everyday life. That I just first of all I just tell you that uh, that they're not to buy, avoid the, this type of things, which is actually uh, from the extinct animals like the fur coats or that that type of souvenirs. And also uh, we can I, I just at the first I just tell you that uh, sometimes uh, by it's like uh, we just make the uh, open the fridge and we just we didn't close it. Sometimes, I, I, sometimes the uh, refrigerator contains CFC gases. So, like, if we just make the freezes all all times open, so sometimes it it uh, it raises the most of the CFC the greenhouse gas in the world. Mm -hmm. So actually, by the, our the very little little things, if you are careful about the little things, we can we can make uh, more safety for our biodiversity. Uh -huh. okay. um, would you consider these things that we can do? Um, would you consider them a responsibility? that we have to help preserve the earth? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so you talked um, about a lot of different threats to biodiversity, um, including poaching, hunting, pollution, deforestation, um, global warming, What and like how, and fishing for marine life. Do you have one that you think is the biggest threat to all um, biodiversity on the planet? Uh, the biggest threat uh, in the biodiversity is all the plants like I, it it cannot be told that like that type of things like because mm -hmm. every in the in the world in the world every single every single organism is important to our to our ecosystem to our extinction to mm -hmm. our to our sustain the world. So actually, I cannot tell about the like it is so much uh, most of the important of like that. But mm -hmm. um, for my things like we, I think like the plantation of trees is the most important step to take to be taken. Yeah. Okay. Um. Can you tell us something uh, unique or interesting when it comes to biodiversity of either of either Bangladesh or that you've learned about Korea? Or something at least. Uh, some interesting things is from Bangladesh and Korea. Uh, in ter yeah, in terms of like the different uh, variety of animals and like. Um. Or is it interesting fact? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, for for my for myself. Uh, <coughs> Like it's my it's my second time uh, to uh, to see the snow here, the snow falling. So like <laughs> I saw I saw like uh, uh, in the in the newsletter that I saw that one one tiger in the in the snow. So actually uh, for myself I saw the tigers they can I think I at that at time like I thought okay tigers can only be in the tropical regions not in cold cold places or not in snow. But in Korea. They are, they are, they were actually, it's an interesting thing I have learned in Korea, that, uh, that the tigers are, there's a lot of tropical animals also here who can, who can survive in the coast. Yeah, that's the interesting thing I, I have. Um, I guess, again, related to Bangladesh, what, um, you showed the video in the beginning of, um, 
beautiful Bangladesh, right? What do you, so what do you think as someone from there that if we were to visit, what things do you think would be must-dos and must-sees? Uh, okay, uh, for me, <clears throat> uh, you know about, uh, actually after coming to Korea, I saw that Busan Beach, the Haemunde Beach, mm -hmm. is one of the most famous in the Korea. Like, you know, who, 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 whoever comes to Korea, okay, you should go to the Haemunde Beach to have the, um, have the visit. So actually, I don't know, do you know that, uh, do you know what is the longest sea beach in the world? The longest sea beach? In the world? In the world. Actually, the longest sea beach in the world <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> the longest sea beach in the world is, is long like 192 kilometers. Wow. 192 kilometers. It's called Cox Badger. And this is, this is in Bangladesh. Wow. The, the longest sea beach in the world is in Bangladesh. And uh, it, is, it is in uh, Chittagong. And if you go to Bangladesh, it's 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 a like you know that uh, Busan Busan is uh, far from Seoul. So for my country is also that our country the Dhaka, the capital, is far from the Dhaka. So actually in Dhaka there's our uh, tourism ministry. They have some tourism management services by our ministry, not some private thing. You just talk with the tourism ministry people. Just they will give you the things like how you can go there. They have their own travels. They are, they have they have their own own transports and their own rest houses there. You can you can go there and I think in the in in the Cox uh, you will find really some good places to be uh, to go around and to enjoy the uh, sunrise and the sunset. That's the one. And actually, I form I think like the second thing. And the mangrove forest in the world, the long, the greatest mangrove forest in the world in, is in Bangladesh. So there, so they have some lot of rest houses. You can just go. And just I, for my for my things, I I I, I live three days in the Sundarbans rest houses. It's really wonderful things. Like no people is, is beside you. Just you just alone, and uh, you can feel the nature. You can feel the night. You can feel the actual what the jungle thing is. It's really great. It's really great. I think. Actually, these two I can just tell you this really great thing, and there's a lot of uh, very delicious foods you can also take. Um, here's another question: uh, Lack of genetic diversity has been a problem in agriculture. The most famous historical example would be the Irish potato blight, potato famine. Uh, could you do? Could you speak on current plants that are dangerously low in genetic diversity? Yeah, I think I would say. In terms of agriculture and. Yes. So, like <clears throat> for this, you know that about biotechnology. So, the biotechnology is, is, is doing like this type of to con to uh, save this type of genetic uh, genetic diversity. That's uh, this is called gene bank. And uh, for this, uh, that's the the scientists they are doing this type of thing. Like uh, they 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 state about gene bank, and that that and the animals who are going to be extinct, they took their genes and they preserve it. So that uh, next time they can uh, they can make another another animals by using the uh, the genes from the gene bank. So actually uh, nowadays the scientists are going uh, going so much hard by themselves to make uh, to make save the uh, this type of genetic diversity to uh, make it conserve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good um, segue into the next question, which is what about producing uh, modified genetically modified species? Do you think that that is uh, an appropriate or acceptable way to help um, preserve diversity? Oh, sorry. To, like, if we were to perhaps genetically modify a species so that it could survive a certain Ah, uh, okay, okay. The modified, mo the modified species, okay. Uh, the problem is there. <clears throat> you can, you can, the biotechnologists, the, the scientists, <coughs> they are going, they already have some tried, some modified species to live in. But the problem is, these types of species, are not uh, so much uh, compatible to the earth. Like uh, sometimes uh, you know that uh, we our, our nature has a lot of problems. Sometimes like sometimes the rains, floods, and the, uh, another 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 problems. So actually, if you know about the evolution theory, that nowadays that that the species are are living in the earth, they they are going going to a long process for their for their survivation. 
they're, they're, they're facing a lot of struggles. But uh, the, the, if the scientists, scientists has, uh, the lot of scientists have been tried it, the modified species, but actually sometimes it, it doesn't work. Especially they, have, they are going to make more hard things to, to do the modified species and actually it, it doesn't like, like I make a modified species and preserve in a, in a place. It's, it's not like that. If I make a modified species, I have to, uh, they, they, it has, has to mm, sustain the world. So that's the thing. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes the modified species, they don't have the comfortability to the world. Interesting. Um, are there any efforts or projects that are being done um, that you know of right now to protect biodiversity by the governments, by the Korean government or the Bangladeshi government? Is this a priority for them? Uh, uh, for my country, uh, for my, my country, for Bangladesh, I don't know. I don't know a lot of, about Korean government because I'm I'm not uh, not a citizen here. But actually, I I can tell about my country. Mm -hmm. So, in my country, uh, I told about the tigers. In the royal, there, there's a you know that in my country there have a royal Bengal tiger is dynamic species in my country. So at times like about 500, maybe 20, it's, it's 20 years ago. There's about 500 tigers in my country. But for the poaching and for a lot of problems nowadays, it is about 100 tigers only. So actually, our government is going to protect the tigers. So actually, you know that uh, I told about that there's uh, the forest lands has going to be decreased. So um, in my country, uh, the, uh, there's a lot of people are living in the Sundarban forest lands, and when they saw some uh, tigers on the sea, and they actually they they attack the tiger uh, and they kill it like this. So actually, our government is going to uh, make raise the concept about tigers to uh, not kill it or how to make protect from it like this. So it is one of the states, and there's also another a lot of states to, uh, to by the like the tree plantation and then not to not use so much uh, CFC gases like this. So yeah, this this is my government thing. Cool. Yeah, they do, they're doing this. Yeah, got some projects. Um, so we only have time for one more question today. Um, yeah. The talk is fascinating, generated a lot of questions, couldn't even get through them all. So if we didn't get a chance to ask your particular question. Um, Please feel free to approach the speaker after the talk. Um, um, the last question we'll have for today is you talked that you talked a little bit about um, why this is important to the world, to us as human and as humans. So, but why? How did you get interested in this personally? What what makes this meaningful to you? Uh, personally, actually, uh, I can just tell you the things like uh, my father. My father is a professor of a department of physics in a college in my country. So actually, when I, I was in my, I was in child, I was a child that time. Uh, I don't know that I, I just I did though I don't want to uh, tell the actual the name, but uh, but my but she told about the, how I take it personally. So I can just tell like uh, I I read about the life, the life autobiography of the uh, of Adolf Hitler uh, by by the main Kampf, you know. So actually, I just asked my father that, uh, okay, that you can just tell me why he is going to kill this so much people. There are a lot of people. A lot of it is. It is I just make it make me so much cry. That why this, that did that he did this? So that time my father told me actually uh, <coughs> this fundamentalism, this fundamental thinking, this fundamentalist man cannot be surviving the world because diversity is the beauty. Like if you just say, if you just see, in the in the whole world, there's a lot of people. You you need to cooperate with all of them. Everybody is your brothers. It doesn't matter like the country to country. Though it is, it makes it like country to country, language to language. But every every people are one human. So actually, like I that time, like he told me, the diversity is beauty. That from the childhood I took this in my mind. So like when I started to learn biology, the biology is one of my most favorite subject. That, that I when I started biology, I, I can get it. Okay, the diversity is the beauty. How diverse in the world is? How diverse the animal planet is? We just need to be more uh, more close to them, and we just need to feel them, because by diversity is the beauty. Actually, it, this is my this is my motto of life my, of my life that to work for the mankind, to work for the whole world. That's it. Thank you, Akuna. So, 
that's all the time we have for the Q&A portion of the talk, but let's give Athanu one and a bit more big round of applause, please, for answering your questions. a very sobering talk that helps us realize the fact that humans are in charge of life on Earth and we shouldn't ignore the responsibility anymore. And now, GIC Talk to the Leader, Jin Che will present you with a small gift of appreciation. Appreciations are to the Chakravarti. We would like to commend you for your outstanding support of Mount Jerusalem. Before we dismiss today,